around the subject that I chose, I started to use the assignments that we were given and the coursework that we were given to explore the other ways in which you could understand the, the, the subject matter. Um, so even though I was most comfortable in qualitative uh, and reading qualitative research, um, I did push myself to look at quantitative studies, which I still struggle with. I, at work we get um, journals in and the, the articles are in I see N and N equals this and I see medians and evens and standard deviation and I still go, oh so Jesus, I'll just go to the conclusion <laughs> and I read the conclusion. But I you know I but it is something that you, you are allowed this opportunity and one of the key pieces we learned that I had was to look beyond what was written and to see what was not written. What are they not saying? What are they what are the assumptions that they're not saying? And that is really stuck to me and every time I pick up something to read, what aren't they saying or what is the message that says like, all the assumptions that they're making and that's informed how I write now. My topic was on the experiences of gay men as fathers in Ireland and it was deeply personal to me because I'm a gay man myself and I hoped I hoped to become a father. So it was deeply personal to it was deeply personal to me mapping that out. The struggle with that is that um, it is, you are uh, an inside researcher and it is difficult when you're analysing your data not to take a stance of support with, the, the, with, your, with your participants and to be more objective. And so that I would say to you all is um, be open to surprising findings or unusual findings or findings that you don't agree with. And with gay fathers, there's people who are kind of transcending notions of gender and were in, were in fact they were reinforcing parts of, of what it was to be a mother and what it was to be a father and I was just so frustrated by one person, particular person and you should let that go, you know, and you have to, you have to let that voice be in the research as well. Um, I took a break um, and I had to because of work stuff and personal stuff um, and that was a struggle and I avoided emails and I avoided that and I told my friends don't, don't ask, how are you going to don't ask? And, <laughs> and, and, but what I thought, what I would say, learn that I have, that I would say to you is that it is okay to take three months for first families, you will go back to it. Um, um, and when I went back to it, what I, what I found was that I wrote very quickly. I hadn't forgotten, you know, that actually taking up the pen again or looking at a computer is actually, it actually comes back to you really quickly. I um, had the benefit of having two friendly readers, Claire was one and Liz Kiley were the others, before I submitted. And I found that um, fantastic because um, they asked questions that I said, you know, and again, it's like what Margaret said, it would be interesting if they came back with questions with things like, it would be interesting if you explored this, when I had one month to go to, to submit it. I was never going to do it, but it kind of, I, you know, I banked it, I banked it. But it, was, it, and it did raise things, about, but you know, that is something that, that might come up in the Viva, or it might be something that or gave me, God, you know, that might have been writing up my conclusion about other places where research could go. Um, so I found friendly readers very good.